Hello everybody, this is Herman Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 20th Lua tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over the OS library, but before we get started, I have a few things to talk to you about. The first thing is that I accidentally lied to you in the last tutorial. We actually have three tutorials to go. We have this, the debug library, which I forgot about, and then, again, one last tutorial to kind of clean things up, like I said last week. I forgot about the debug library, but that's just one more tutorial. We're still pretty close to the end. So look forward to that. And another thing, I finally got a new recording software. I've been using a free program called Cam Studio for most of these tutorials, except for like the first two. And it's good if you don't want to spend any money, but it has some problems. Uh, one major problem is it has a huge memory leak in it, so you can really only run the program for about five minutes at a time, so... That was annoying, and also it would commonly reset all my settings, and the default settings are weird, and they don't work for YouTube, that's why in uh, the 18th tutorial, the first part of the string library, the aspect ratio is all off. It's because my settings got reset, and I didn't uh, put them back the right way, so that should be fixed now. Uh, this new recording software is called Movavi Screen Capture, it's uh, I think like $25.00. And it works great. Uh, one problem, something's wrong with my version because I got it off of Amazon. And it won't open pr properly, so if I want to open the program, I have to uninstall and reinstall it. Uh, because that's the only time it will launch without uh, telling me to buy a license, which I've already done. So that's a problem with it. Uh, I don't know how often that happens, but it's clearly a bug, and I don't know when they'll fix that. But it's still a great recording software so far, so I highly recommend using it. But that's all I have to talk to you about, so let's get on to the, to the tutorial. Okay, so this should be a pretty short tutorial. There's only two major functions we have to go over, and then a few small ones. The two major functions are os.date and os.time. So we're going to go over os.time first. So let's, we're going to print the result. So what os.time does is you give it a table that holds the date and time in a specific format and then it returns the Unix code for that time. So we're gonna say os.time and we give it a table. If you didn't know, I've definitely mentioned this before, but just in case, if you're only giving a function a table as parameters, you don't need to do uh, open and close normal parentheses and curly brackets, you can just have a uh, the function parameters in the curly brackets. So that's just a uh, syntax thing that's useful to know. So we're gonna give it the current date, so we'll say year equals 2014 uh, month, it is May, so 5 day I believe is next, yes. Uh, sorry I leaned away from my mic a little there, if you could hear that. Day is 11 and I'm recording this at 10, so we'll say hour equals 10, because it's 10 a.m. So these are the minimal par minimum parameters you can give it. We're giving it the year, month, day, and hour. You can also give it minute and seconds. Actually, let's do that. So min, it's abbreviated, equals 32, and sec uh, 33. And it's not daylight savings time right now, so you could also have is DST equals false. So these are all the parameters you can give the table. And what this function will do is it will take all of these members of the table and it will put it into Unix code. So let's save. And we can run it. We get three. 139982253. So that's the Unix code for the date this is being recorded on. So the next function is os.date. So os.date, in its most basic form, does the exact opposite of os.time. So it actually takes two parameters. Whoops. Two parameters. One is a, a string, and this is the format string. I'm sure you're tired of those by now. And the next is Unix time. So, uh,. I forgot what the number that was just returned was. One second, I'm going to look at the video. Okay, so uh, I looked back at the video. 
This is the number that was returned from our os.time function, so this is the current... This was the current date and time about three or four minutes ago. So it won't be exact, but it'll be pretty close. So what this function will do is it will return... Well, in this, when we're using this format string, it will return the table that we input for our os.time function. So it'll have the year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and is daylight savings. So we actually can't print this. We're going to have to do something else. We can say t equals os.date and for k v in pairs on table t do print k v and end. So this will just print out all the members of the table that is returned. So we'll save this, and I didn't close the folder, good. We run it and we get hour, 11, minute, oh it's not in the proper order. Hour is 11, minutes 32, weekday equals 1, W day? Not exactly sure what that means. Month is 5, year is 2014, second is 33, and Y day is 1 third. Oh, I get what that means. W day is the... Uh, day of the week it is, so I'm recording this on Sunday, so I guess it considers that the first day of the week. And, uh, Y day, uh, it's May 11th, so, fun fact, May 11th is the 131st day of the year. And is DST equals true? I think I input the number wrong because the hour and is DST is wrong. But, that's okay. Actually, no, I think it is actually daylight savings time. No. I don't know. I may have input the number wrong. But anyway, that is os.date in the most simple form. But there are other format strings we can use, probably to your dismay since we spent so much time on them in the string tutorial. But these are much simpler. You don't have to worry about char sets or all the different modifiers. You're just saying percents and then the format. Alright, so I've copied the table with all the other format strings from the Lua documentation website. So uh, I'll read through it for you. Percent %A is the abbreviated week, weekday name, so WED is Wednesday. Percent capital A, full weekday name, Wednesday. Percent B, abbreviated month name, SEP. Capital B, full month name, September. C is the date and time, so... Uh, it's using a different date as an example, but for our example, it would be 5 slash 11 slash 14 at uh, 10, I think it was 32, 33. And then day of the month, so like the number day of the month, so it's saying 16, it would be 11 for our example. The hour using a 24 hour clock is percent H, percent I is the hour using a 12 hour clock, so uh, the percent H is uh, military time. Percent M is the minute and the hour. Percent uh, lowercase m is the month. The uh, It'll be 1 through 12, so from January to December. Percent P is whether it's AM or PM. Percent capital S is uh, the second in the minute. Percent W is the number, uh, the number day it is. So uh, for us, Sunday is 1, and then Saturday is 6. Percent X is the date, uh, like this, so 5 slash 11 slash 14 for our example. Percent, uh, that's percent lowercase x. Percent capital X is the time, so, uh, for example, I think it was 10, 32, 33. Percent Y is the full year, so 2014 for our example. Percent lowercase Y is the two digit year, so 14. And percent percent, just like the string library, is the character percent. So let's just have an example. We'll just show, uh, we'll say a percent, percent a, percent capital A, because we want the full weekday, in, and then what's the month? Um, full month, percent capital B. So this is going to say a Sunday in May. So. Save this, 
and we run it a Sunday in May. So you can see this works a lot like the pattern uh, characters in the string library. It's almost exactly the same actually, but instead of a, a subject string to search in, it's the Unix time. So that's all the complicated functions in the OS library out of the way. The next function is os.clock. A uh, very simple function, doesn't take any parameters. This is just the total elapsed time that the program has been running. So if we save this now, it should be a pretty low number since we're just running one command. So we get zero, so uh, I guess that executed in zero milliseconds. Cool. But, uh, one sec. Sorry about that, someone was at the door. But say we... Actually, let's make a quick timer with this. So we'll say x equals os dot clock so this will save the current uh, time that the program has been running and we'll say while os dot clock minus x so we're saying while the total time that the program has been running minus the starting time that the uh, timer started at is less than 5 actually it'll say 1000 so we'll make it wait a second because it's uh, timed in milliseconds so while the total time the clock's been running is less than a thousand do nothing end and then after a second we'll print hello so this should wait a second and then print hello if you're allowed to have an empty while loop I think you are So, it's waiting a second. Maybe it is timed in seconds. Let's try one. Yep, it waited a second and then said, uh, said hello. So, os.clock times in seconds rather than milliseconds, like most clocks in programming languages do. So, let's leave our clock there for the time being. The next function is ox dot, or not ox, os dot exit. So what this function does is it terminates the program. So we say os dot exit, and it takes two optional parameters. We can say they're both boolean, so we'll say true. Actually, we'll say false here, and just get rid of this line. So the parameters, the first one is the return status of the program. If it's true, it means the program executed successfully, that, and it's just time for the program to end. And false would mean that there was an error and the program had to exit, uh, and the program failed. So you'd use this for uh, debug information. And the second one is whether you want to uh, clean the program up before you exit. You can usually set this to false, and what cleanup means is uh, it will release all memory, run all finalizers for tables, and just get rid of everything. So you can usually set this to false because most operating systems, uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux at least, uh, do that automatically when a program exits. It cleans up all the memory. It won't run all the finalizers, but that's usually okay because the program's exiting anyway. But if you want to set it to true to run the finalizers, that's okay. And remember, finalizers is something that a table does when it's being deleted. So let's save this. What it should do is wait a second and then exit without uh, doing the io.read thing. So wait a second and exits. So the next two functions are pretty self-explanatory. The first one is os.getenv, which stands for get environment. It just takes a string and it gets the location of an environment variable. And then there's os.execute. Uh, and this one also takes a string. This is the equivalent of the system function in C. And if you don't know what that is, basically what it does is it allows you to kind of access the uh, command prompt or terminal if you're using Mac. It allows you to access that from your program. So we can say make directory dir, not dir, dir. Save it and run and then it made a directory right here 
So you can execute any uh, command prompt command from here. So the final function is os.setLocale, so we'll print it dot set locale and what this function does is it allows you to kind of set the way that things are formatted depending on where you live so uh, the example we're going to use I believe is Puerto Rico it's the example that's used in the book because the author I believe is in Puerto Rico so I don't know the codes for other locales but I'm giving you the Puerto Rico one so you can use that I guess but Again, this just basically sets how things are formatted based on where you live. So the format for Puerto Rico is ISO 88591. So that's the first string. And then the second string is what you want to format. So the options are collate, which controls the alphabetic order of strings. C type, which controls uh, what individual characters are, so like what's a letter, what's a number, what's a special character. Monetary uh, involves money. I'm not. It has no effect on Lua programs, but that's what I assume it does. Numeric controls how numbers are formatted. Uh, for example, in Latin American countries, they use commas instead of uh, uh, periods for decimals. Um, time controls how the date and time functions format. And all just means that it will, the function will control all of them. So let's just put uh, all here. All's the default, so if you don't put one here, if you don't give it a parameter, then it'll default to all, but uh, you can also put it here. And this just controls all of those. I'm not sure how I would give you an example, because I'm not sure how anything would change, but. Uh, if you need to use this, then this is how you do it. So that's all for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, like I said, we'll be going over the debug library. Then after that, we'll just have that one small tutorial to wrap things up and clean up a few functions I forgot or just haven't gone over for some reason. And then it's on to the C library. So look forward to that and see you in the next tutorial.